Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 268. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. I can't think of a very funny intro at the moment, so just pretend I did and laugh. <laughs> Good one, man. <laughs> How have you been doing? I have been doing hilariously well. Well, not so hilariously well, otherwise I would have been able to make people laugh right off the bat. <laughs> okay, so, yes, but other than, I haven't been here in a while. Man, yeah, it's yeah. all the dust. Well, you've been busy, and I didn't get the cleaner in, and I was sick a week ago, so, yeah. Things have, well, they're okay, but still, uh, it's working. Yay. So how have you been doing, man? Like, I heard that you got a new graphics card. Oh, yeah, yeah, which means I can finally do Photoshop again, I can do video editing, and most importantly, I can actually play games! Overwatch! Yes, we can go back to playing Overwatch and getting horrible team comps. Oh, uh, well, if you want horrible team comps, go play Total Mayhem. <sighs> yeah, or, 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 oh, oh, I know, I could finally join you and play Payday 2, Norman. Yay! <laughs> and we could... So it could be you, me, and two randos, which means we'll still never be able to do anything right. Forget that. Like, it's just you and me, and I'll add some mods where, you know what, we'll talk about that one later, but mods are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good to be back, it's good to see you guys again, and uh, we got a decent size bit of news today. Yep, uh, news is not Considering bad. Considering we're in the middle of a hiatus though, but we got a decent amount. True, but still, um, according to what I gathered last week, uh, today is the last day of ponies, so uh, it'll be the start of the pony hiatus, but according to um, Australia, they'll be getting episode 12 and 13. So who knows, we might get that leaked somehow to us. Somehow. Yay! Other than that... um. Half-hearted, yay! <laughs> yeah, true, but still, a hiatus is a hiatus. But anyway, um, Wills... Do you know a company or product food called Muslimus? How do you say that? Musclemans? Yes, them. Yeah, they're a brand of like, like, uh, apple sauces and puddings and whatnot. Are they any good? I don't know. If I want, if I want apple sauce, I just grab an apple and grab a hammer and bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> Well, maybe I could change your mind because, um, mas- <laughs> I got no idea how to say that company's name. So the applesauce company, Muscle Man's. <laughs> yeah, why not? But anyway, uh, they're working or they're in collaboration with Carnival or Carnival, the cruise liner uh, company. I think we reported on them way back when, and them doing a whole um, Hasbro deal with. My Little Pony and Transformers. And so they're working with Carnival to do some kind of competition or contest for prize. Oh gosh, can you imagine having the winners of this uh, of, of this contest and then the winners of the Transformers contest being on the same Carnival cruise? Just like, what, you like Transformers? That thing sucks. You like ponies? That sucks. Okay, well, you're on this side of the ship, and this is our side of the ship. But that's where the bathrooms are located. Too bad. <laughs> uh, then war starts out. But still, uh, that seems to be really interesting. Um, entry for a chance to win a Carnival Cruise or a... Ma- oh, sorry, my bad. It doesn't mean uh, getting on the cruise. Uh, it says either a chance to win a cruise... Uh, ship prize or win pony contest that's much better than that thing that we mentioned before so you know what if you do enter this go get movie tickets you can watch the movie for free and possibly a premiere at whatever location they're doing in los angeles probably yeah i guess or you could just you know avoid try and avoid spoilers on the internet and (laughs) (laughs) yeah right good luck eat a bunch of applesauce to get movie tickets i say that's worth it yeah, guaranteed to. Well, well, at least your uh, at least your diet will be good. <laughs> yay! Somehow, hey, yay, yay. yeah. But anywho, um, I guarantee, guarantee you, you'll be very, you'll be very regular with that much applesauce. Hey, <laughs> yay, yay. But anywho, talking <laughs> about My Little Pony movies, um, it seemed that Daniel Ingram has. 
completed the scoring for the My Little Pony movie. So, yay! And in his recent tweet, he mentioned that it wouldn't be a My Little Pony movie without Mandolin. And with that, the score is done. MLP movie, 12. Manchester United, 0. What? <laughs> well, you're talking about scoring. <laughs> Not that kind of scoring. <laughs> oh. Well, Manchester United is still 0. <laughs> uh, but still, um, we, now we know that the movie is going to have some kind of mandolin inside. So that's that takes us way back when, when this fandom first started. <laughs> wow. I'm kind of wondering uh, if, it, if it's like... Uh, Strumming a little mandolin and singing somewhere over the rainbow. I doubt it. I doubt it. But still. Oh, that would be so funny. How so? Reminds me of, uh, that Hawaiian singer guy. I forget his name. Dang it. He's really popular too. <laughs> ah, this is gonna, this is gonna drive me nuts now. Uh, uh someone in the comments will know it, but he's a big guy and he's sitting and he's got a very high voice. He plays a little, plays a little guitar. Look at ukulele and sings songs. Dang it, man! Come on. I don't know. Work with me. Mandopony. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Mandopony has a very high falsetto voice, <laughs> he, he, and he's a very large Hawaiian man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let, let's go with that. Oh, but you know. Okay, well, 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 we guarantee that Mando Pony will no longer ever be on this show now. now that I've said that. I, 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 I would count that one out. It's good to have the score done now. I wonder if they're gonna release a, an OST or a, or a CD soundtrack for purchase. Soonish, like, um, wait till one month or a few weeks before the movie and then we'll get it somehow. And talking about money for Hasbro, um, Recently, the CEO of Hasbro, uh, Brian Goldern, uh, Gold, Goldnerd? Goldnerd? How do you say that name? Goldnerd? Let's see. Gil, Gold, Goldner. Goldner. It'd be Goldner. Alright, so. Yeah, anyway. I think that's, yeah, Goldner. <laughs> Goldner. So anyway, uh, Brian Goldner, he was in an interview with, uh, Hollywood, uh, with the Hollywood Reporter. And, um, they've been talking about how uh, most of their toys are boy, generically boy focused over the years, and he responded with uh, apparently that thirty percent of the pony audience is now boys. So that's something interesting to look at in terms of how their company is looking at things, because um, beforehand, as we mentioned before. Hasbro was mostly a boy-centric focus company. You got your G.I. Joes, you got your Transformers, and if you're going to go for the whole toy brand of boys, you got your Star Wars, you got your Marvel uh, action figures, you got your, uh, what you call this, Nerf guns. Then on the side, you have your My Little Ponies, your Dollar Life, something like that, and My Little Pet, sorry, uh, Little Pet Shop. And so on. Hmm. You know, now that you say that, I'm kind of wanting a crossover between Nerf and Transformers. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. It's like, hey, what's that gigantic, ugly piece of machinery you have? Oh, this is a Nerf gun, and it can transform into a Gatling gun. It looks <laughs> needlessly complicated and highly detailed for no absolute reason. Yeah, it's kind of designed by the guy who made the character designs for Michael Bay's Transformers. Ah. <laughs> Uh, but still, but still, um, it's interesting to see that 30% of the My Little Pony audience are boys. So that's an interesting fact that they got there. 40% is girls and, uh, and then 25% is, uh, adults and 10% is weirdos. That's a hundred and five, that's a hundred and five percent. There's a bit of overlap. <laughs> Uh, but still, um, if you're interested in reading the whole thing, it's in the show notes below. But still, I am really curious about how they get the metric for this. And it's really interesting to know about these facts. And, well, y you know one thing about what boys and girls have in common, right, uh, Will? They both have human genome codes in their DNA? That, and also they like to wear nail polish. Um... 
okay, well, very specific people like to wear nail polish. <laughs> yes, very specific people like this fandom too. I ain't complaining. <laughs> okay, I just... <laughs> three out of ten, Norman, uh, on that segue. Three out of ten. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I try. So, um, nail polish. A company called China Glaze has scooped up the license for the My Little Pony thing, and they're celebrating the upcoming movie with a uh, nail polish theme right around the ponies. And it seems that with every purchase, you'll get a Rainbow Dash Funko Pop figure, so yay. Well, judging by the colors here, though, it does look like it'd be one heck of a fun set to use, at least. I mean, you got a wide variety of colors, very sparkly, very glitterly. So, yeah, I mean, heck, if you're a bit of an artist, uh, this could definitely be pretty fun for you. Mm-hmm. If you uh, like the whole nail thing, yeah. It looks like a, it looks like a cool set, but I don't do it, so I can't... Uh, I cannot be the judge of this particular pastime. True. It's still something interesting to see. Uh, and the lineup is about $8 per nail polish bottle. So I'm guessing it's per bottle. And the full set has 14 bottles. So 8 times 14, you'll do the math. I'm not very good at it. And so yeah, still, um, it's a bit pricey. Uh, but 8 times 14, that's going to be about... Oh, four is, uh, three is, uh, 24, 32, 32 plus 80. 112. 12. Yep. 112. Yeah, 112. 112 about, but maybe there's like a, maybe it's like a flat 99 because, you know, it's a box set. Uh, Who knows? Yeah, probably it'll be, uh, 15.99 just because they can. That wouldn't even be selling it at cost. That'd be selling it at a loss. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, Norman. This is simple capitalism 101. Uh, but still, but still. Um, it seems that, uh, these things are out there. If you're interested, you can, uh, check out in the links. And let's head on to the next news. Any good segue, Will? Well, you know, painting your nails is extremely effeminate. And speaking of highly effeminate objects, let's talk about Justin Bieber. Uh, what does he have to do with ponies? Oh, well, actually, I uh, remember, remember Feather Bangs, that character voiced by Vincent Tong, the one about, with the episode that involved, uh, Big Mac trying to woo Sugar Bell? Yeah, I remember that episode, um, I remember it fondly. Yes, well, turns out Vincent Tong based his Feather Bangs voice work on Justin Bieber, so literally the pony that was designed like Justin Bieber was voiced to act like Justin Bieber. It basically was a giant joke at Justin Bieber, so, <laughs> They knew what they were doing. They, 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 they knew. They knew. The, the, the writers, the storyboarders, the actors, everybody knew the joke coming into this. <laughs> now, the only thing we have to know is what does the Beebs think of his portrayal? Uh, I don't think I really care. The guy's probably too busy cussing out Donald Trump and throwing water bottles at people. <laughs> uh, no comment. Oh, no, 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 wait. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Getting water bottles thrown at him. <laughs> uh, no comment on that one, man. No comment on that one. But still, uh, Vincent Tong has inspiration, so that's cool. Well, hey, I mean, just uh, take the teenage heartthrob pop singer icon of the past decade, and that's that's the first thing that comes to mind. A couple decades ago would have been, you know, Michael Jackson. True. And um, the question that um, a guy asked on the Twitter is, well, long story short, uh, was it, Justin Timberlake or Justin Bieber and like you mentioned before Tong uh, stated it's Justin Bieber so eh. if it was Justin Timberlake he'd have a lot more class ah uh, true that <laughs> oh and here's here's the other part he'd actually be able to act <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm not saying Vincent Tong can't act I'm, I'm just saying Justin okay Bieber. okay J- Justin Timberlake is a multi-talented uh actor singer songwriter uh I think he's even a director now too. Really, you know the dude, the dude is a the dude is a multifaceted artist. You check out his IMDb page. The dude ever since ever since he was part of the yeah you know, the social network yeah Backstreet Boys. He, uh, was, part, he was part of the back no NSYNC. yeah he was part of the Backstreet Boys. No, he, oh yeah, NSYNC. damn it! I always get them mixed up. 
<laughs> that was that, that's when I was a kid. Dang it, I should I should know this. Stuff. Okay, whatever. The point is, point is, after his group broke up, he was like one of the few that kept going on to do singing and whatnot. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah. Justin Timberlake is in sync, and Nick Carter is in Backstreet Boys because Nick Carter led to Aaron Carter, and we all remember how that ended. Yeah, it didn't end well, but still, whatever happened to them? <laughs> I do know that um, they had like a reunion thing for like the oh no, wait that was in sync again. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There was, there was a bit of a rivalry between the two two ba- da- bands and their and their fans and whatnot. Yeah. And I was just like, I like certain songs from both. I think Backstreet Boys had the better sales, but in sync had the better had the better hits. Basically, it's like overall sales was Backstreet Boys, but overall uh, song like records were uh, in uh, NSYNC's corner. And fun fact, um, NSYNC has or had a toy line or doll line um, after their uh, likeness, while Backstreet Boys had a Marvel comic or a comic produced or created by Stan Lee. So, yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually think I remember uh, Lane Cara, the comic reviewing guy, actually did an episode on the Backstreet Boys yeah. comic. And the only reason why I know that is because my little sis had the Backstreet Boys comic. <laughs> so, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> ah, and that's the news for this week. Uh, let's hit well... Up. Oh, well, that was a good. That was a good note to end on. Yep. Music. Yeah. Let's talk about music bands from the '90s and early 2000s. Yeah, a bunch of their songs listening good. in are. Yeah, people listening in though are just like, "Wow, <laughs> these people are old or something." You it's like, damn it, I'm not even thirty. You can't call me old. Uh, you youngins. <laughs> But anywho, uh, let's head on to the next topic. And said topic is what have we done with our week? So, Wills, uh, since you had, well, I'm, I'm going to cheat a bit because last week you're not here to report on the LARPings. So, how was the LARPs? Oh, yeah, I said I was going to a LARP. Well, the drive was nice, at least. I learned learned about toll roads oh. and never to go on them ever again. How bad was because it? Because they're a joke. I spent $17 to save a half hour of driving. And that's bad? Oh, seventeen dollars for how? No, that's bad. Yeah, that is bad, especially because is like you know, the joke is you're supposed to you want to do the toll roads because you're supposed to avoid traffic. True. Well, I was in the middle of the day uh, driving through uh, Chicago on two ninety four, and the whole dang thing was more congested than me and during flu season. <laughs> oh, that bad. Oh, yeah. in fact, actually, it was so bad because I had to pull off multiple times because you know upcoming toll please turn off if you don't have the i pass or the digital pass or whatever thing it was mm. i had to pull over to the side where the toll booth thing was which had a long incoming and outgoing ramp to it but the funny part was is because it had such a long ramp to it you know the only people going through it were you know ones paying cash mm-hmm. i actually was cutting through traffic by literally Cruising up to the the ticket the toll booth, throwing in my change into the little uh, booth, and then cruising forward. And because traffic was moving so slow, I was usually about like a half a mile ahead of the traffic behind me that I left. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It seems that the system for the highway in the states is really really reliant on people having that iPass or something like that. Uh, it depends on which state you're in. I'll mm. say the good old state of Minnesota here, we do not have toll roads. And while we do have a lot of road construction happening, we at least have decent traffic. Nothing incredibly stupid like Chicago or something. But then again, you know, population density. Mm, but true. no, you want to know about the LARP. Yes. Well, I have to say it was a very fun success. We actually had a lot of people. I uh, didn't have as many staff, though, because a lot had to cancel at the last moment. But everything turned out really well. Well, if you want to see some of the pictures of the videos, you can go to the Facebook group, Warriors of Light LARP. Uh, they are, they're a Facebook group, and you can actually see video and pictures of the whole group there. And there's some really funny moments and uh, uh, some f- fun acting. I mean, we really, of course, you have to realize we're just a bunch of nerds <laughs> doing method acting with costumes in the middle of a park. But you know what? 
we're having fun doing it. <laughs> um, things I remember. Oh, let's see. What, what, what was a good story? Um, well, I guess I'll have to just do a personal story because I can't remember anyone else's stories of what happened with them just off the top of my head. I guess I'll, sorry, I'm a little bit out of it right now, but, uh, Basically, the character I play as is just uh, one character I made up originally for a story. It's just uh, a mage named McFinnigan. And uh, thanks to an interaction, basically, uh, he has... I uh, was able to... Basically, uh, a pixie came by. And the guy... The, guy uh, the, the way they did this is they actually had a very, very long stick. And at the end of the stick, they used uh, like a combination of... Uh, ra- uh, colorful rags and wings and you know, just uh, an interesting combination. Basically, use that as the prop of, yeah, this is a sprite, basically. And uh, it basically started interacting with people who were back at the inn, or the, the hub area. And uh, I was there with a couple others. And while other people were like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool, tell us a story or something. Or, wow, you're really interesting. I was just like, keep that thing away from me, keep that thing away from me, keep that thing away from me. It's like, well, what's wrong, Big Finnegan? It's just a sprite. It's, it's just a fairy. Yeah, a fake creature. Let's just see how fun it is when it decides to take you into its ring and have you dance for all eternity. <laughs> Why wouldn't have you dance for all eternity? Maybe an hour or two, or a day or two. You know, just for fun. It's like, yeah, your idea of fun, I know what you're into, you sick. That's not a word! <laughs> and then, then, then to which then it basically extended to, uh, I was able to figure out that my character, okay, my character has an un, has an irrational fear of fey. I mean, yeah, you wanna be, you wanna, you wanna beware fey, fey creatures anyway, but even the friendly ones is like, they had like this friendly water spirit that came by that other people knew from previous stuff, whatnot. But the second it appeared, basically, it's just I was just like, nope, hit behind a tree. I was like, I'm not here. He's like, oh, Big Finnegan, this is a kind water spirit. Yeah, yeah, kind water spirit. I haven't heard that one before. Before you know it, reaches its hands around you and tries to drown you midair. <laughs> oh wow, Big Finnegan is really irrational. Hey, hey, it's just like don't 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 mess with fake. It's just like, but basically, just let, um, let's just say he had encounters with a fake creature before, and it's scarred him for life. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, but um, there were a lot of other fun events, too. Um, basically, uh, the LARP group's version of the devil showed up. Oh, wow. Like a wheeling, dealing guy who, dress up, who, dressed, uh, who dresses up in a jester outfit. <laughs> And basically, the thing is, you don't really want to talk with him because he'll take misconstrue anything you say as an actual wish. And the and the uh, GMs apparently love that's not a word with players with this character. <laughs> uh, his, his, name, his name is El Samo. Just like D- don't 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 talk to him. Don't do anything. So, uh, and the cool part is, you know, this is other characters talking to other characters. You know, it's all in character acting for the entire weekend. So. It's uh, it's fun learning about everything, uh, you know, just just as an organic experience. Of course, the thing I had to ruin uh, the second we were done because I, the the second I met the guy, you know, I mean, I didn't have any interaction with him. I, other people just interacted, and I just played the role of the background character who was just like, yeah, yeah, don't mess with this thing. He's kind of like a fake creature. He's utterly powerful and will wipe you like a bug. <laughs> yep, yep, not not dealing with this. I'm gonna hide over here behind the street. But uh. Uh, no, it's just like uh, I was talking with uh, the guy who runs the whole thing afterwards, and uh, I said, "You know what? It'd be funny if we 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 made puppets of some of the characters here, and it's like a Sesame Street sort of thing." He's like, "Yeah, why do you say that?" And it's just like, "Okay, oh, because because then we could do 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 Al Samo's world." <laughs> And to which he couldn't stop laughing after that and actually had to get a drink of water to get rid of hiccups. That's <laughs> uh, almost a demonic jester who will ruin your day. Do, 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 do. All your souls are mine. <laughs> uh, that was good to me. They should do it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh, yeah. Um, actually, I do remember some other stuff, but, uh, if you want to see some videos, uh, oh, uh, you want to see a video of everyone freaking the heck out about, uh, a, uh, a wraith 
which will disappear and reappear and basically harass the entire group from one mod all the way back to the end, basically. <laughs> uh, you can see that in a video on, uh, on probably on, probably, I believe they have finished editing actually. It should be on the, uh, Facebook group. So if you want to see more pictures of some cool people, uh, you can definitely go check it out on Warriors of Light at uh, the Facebook group. All right, you then. Oh, I will, I will say this though. One of my best friends though, who's a great artist, he created a a cowboy character in a in a medieval fantasy RPG. <laughs> All right. Oh, and here's the thing though. He's a cowboy wizard. <laughs> How? He, his wand his, his wand is in the shape and form of a gun, and he shoots spells out of it. <laughs> How? How? What's the, what's the logic? Awesome. What's, what's, what's the, what you call this, um. What's the logic behind it? Yeah. Uh, his entire, uh, his entire, uh, village is stationed out of an oasis in like the far west and whatnot. And they're like ranchers or, you know, farmers, basically w- wild west sort of people, you know, just like, they, they, they live, uh, they live off the land that they've been provided because of this oasis and they're, <laughs> Very, because the oasis is magical, you know, there's some people that just have high magical affinity and whatnot. Uh, alright, alright, alright. That sounds yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. And he, and, and the funny part was is that he's actually my best friend and he, even after we were done playing the game, he still had trouble slipping back into that accent automatically. It's like, damn it, I spent an entire weekend acting as his character and now I can't stop talking like him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You have to take a while to reset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. But all in all, very good, very fun. Driving could have gone better. Yeah, still, the adventures that count. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you're, you're... So that's enough about me ranting. Uh, what, uh, what were you up to? Hmm, as for me, what have I been really doing? Um, in all honesty, I haven't been doing anything new or Amazing or fantastic. I mean, I just been doing the whole thing of Overwatch and Payday, and that's about it. Probably no, no movies, no, uh, no, not even any YouTube thing. So technically, my cycle of entertainment has just been the same. Um, I'm trying to think really hard what new things I've been doing or watching, and honestly, nothing new came up. Well, if you really want to, if I really have to be really picky about it, um, I've been watching a few cartoons. Um, one of them is called Mike Tyson's Mystery. And have I told you about the show before? Mike Tyson's Mysteries. Yeah, I've seen the, <laughs> I've seen the previews for that. It's a, it's a silly little show. Yep. And well, okay. I, I'll, I'll guess I use that as my base of, um, entertainment of what I've been doing this week. And, uh, Mike Tyson Mystery sounds rather interesting as a show, but what it entails is it involves the boxer Mike Tyson and his crew of mystery solvers. Just imagine Scooby Doo. But instead of solving mysteries in the sense of like how Scooby Doo does it, they're Oh, you mean you mean wandering around very bad and very dated humor that you can even barely call humor, and then uh just figuring out who the villain is thanks to Scooby and Shaggy screwing up and causing an accident. Yeah, true. But in this scenario, people send mysteries to Tyson via Messenger Pigeon. They go to location and solve mysteries. Um in one case there's this haunted house. And it's really haunted by a ghost. And how does Mike Tyson solve it? Punch it out. Done. And every end of the episode, um, you get a snippet from the real Mike Tyson talking about some random stuff. For example, there's a part where he's talking about fishing or uh, talking about his agent or something like that. And the voice for Mike Tyson, the character in the show... Um, usually when you have something like that, you'll have some kind of professional sound alike. Like, example, um, Jackie Chan has his movie, uh, Jackie Chan Adventure, and he didn't really voice his character, but another voice actor did it for him. But in Mike Tyson's mystery, it's him. Mike Tyson voiced his own character. Ah. And that's what made me really interested in 
watching it because some of the things he says in the cartoon is just insane. And to know that it's Mike Tyson voicing it, it's like, hmm, you know how dumb you sound right now? And you green like this? You're one big man, man. <laughs> I, th- I think he's just having fun with it. I know. It's... He he just uh, you you can tell by a guy who's really having fun just doing stuff that that's it like he's just doing it to have fun he's already rich so uh, this little project here is just something to have fun with is to uh, expand his IMDb yeah and let's face it anything that keeps him out of the ring and biting people's ears <laughs> is, a, is a game for the human race <laughs> yeah somehow uh, but still uh, it's it's fun it's Fun. Uh, but still, uh, this has been my week. Anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show gmail.com. And if you want to reach us on the Twitters, you can do so at the MBS show. As for me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. And Wills, where can the good people find you? Uh, if you want to find my artwork, you can find me on DeviantArt at willisund.deviantart.com. If you want to find my on a fan fiction, which never updates. <laughs> oh. You can find me at filmfiction.net slash willazen. And if you want to see random stuff that I talk about, you can find me on Twitter at willazen at Twitter. Ah, alrighty then, alrighty then. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvalive.com. Links will be in the show notes. And also, please do subscribe to our new podcast called the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you have me, Silver Quill and Sakura Heart Song and probably a guest of the week talk about the Pony episodes, comics and also movies and also other random things like comic books from other series, television show from other series or even movies from, well, other series. And if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. You can support the show with a dollar and that will get you a huge thank you and also full access to the deleted content and early access to the review and discussion podcast. And for five, you'll get the same, but we'll appreciate you even more. We appreciate everyone the same, but still, um, the, it's a thought that counts. Yes, and the thought involves money. Oh, well, don't don't do that. That's not right. <laughs> Anywho, I like to thank a few people from the Patreons. I like to thank Lurker, Cat, Violet Genesis, Nemtractorius, Starstream, and also Master of Black. Thank you guys for the support. You guys have been really awesome, and I hope to get more supporters and shout you out even more. If I can get ten supporters and shout you out. <laughs> In the, at the end of the show That'll be something And if I get hundreds whew, That's going to be a long list <laughs> But anywho I have been Norman Sanzo I have been Wilson And we'll guys catch you next week With another amazing and fun episode Of the MBS show See ya Bye